Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch How Loki Game, the only place for Magic the Gathering Arena beginner-friendly content. Today we're continuing along with our Ikoria Lair of Behemoths limited guide uh, where we're providing you guys cheat sheets for each individual archetype within Ikoria Limited. Today we're talking about Simic Mutate, you guys. So if you're unfamiliar with this series, I really recommend you start in part one and work your way through it just so you get a feel of how things work. So, breaking down Simic Mutate. We're ramping into big creatures, we're mutating our creatures, we're stalling the board, and we're using life gain and reach to survive. And then I do want to add that this is probably not as strong as the rest of the limited meta. So we're going to probably splash a third color when we're playing Simic to... Uh, enable some rares, right? If we get a rare that's an off color, we're gonna splash that color to enable um, that rare that we picked within our packs, right? If it's off color. So just a little food for thought when you're building the deck. We do wanna break down how our spreadsheet works here. So let me take down my webcam. You'll see behind me where it says bombs. This is your first priority picks, right? You take bombs first before anything. Secondly, you wanna take any form of removal that's within your colors. Removal is just as good as the bombs. If you don't have removal, you cannot deal with your opponent's bombs, right? So you have to have your bombs and then removal for their bombs. So that is first and foremost, how you're gonna build all of your limited decks, not just the Simic Mutate deck. Moving on, we do wanna talk about our high priority picks. So these are the picks that are really going to make the archetype come together and be what it is. Within the high priority picks, you'll see we have um, the Planeswalker symbol, the Trident, for our most important cards. These are cards that 100% have to be included in the deck or it will not work. When we do look at that, we have Parcel Beast, Primal Empathy, and Trumpeting Gnar as our required cards. Parcel Beast is just a great cheap mutate. Primal Empathy is a draw engine plus a creature ramp engine. And then Trumpeting Gnar um, is just a board presence engine. That's, that's a 3-3 token generator. That is massive, you guys. Um, tagged along with those, uh, we have a couple other cards. One that makes your things cheaper and another draw engine, right? Moving on, we have our low priority picks. So whenever you can't pull anything previously or below it, then you're going to move up and take something uh, higher. So low priority picks, really anything with mutate or um, essence uh, symbiote, something that makes use of mutate, right? So Creatures without mutate that um, gain something from mutate, right? Um, and then again, lastly, we have things with life gain and reach for our filled deck slash lowest priority. So we're talking about Honey Mammoth, um, Edgy's Turtle, things like this, right? That are just going to stay alive, uh, stop the aggro attacks, right? Um, and help us get to those big bad creatures. So that's the Simic Mutate Limited Cheat Sheet. If you're interested in downloading a copy of this, it is in the description below. We're gonna have a link. Um, and then again, if you are new to this series, I really recommend you check out the other parts of it. Link in the description there as well. This video is brought to you by aetherhub.com and MTGA Assistant. Be sure to check out MTGA Assistant, uh, what I think is one of the best Magic the Gathering arena trackers. Um, so check it out. Let me know what you think. I'd love your uh, your feedback on that as well. We're live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. Having your company would just make my day that much better. And I really recommend you all join our Discord to check out not only our communities, competitions, and giveaways, but uh, all of the other different uh, information channels that we have within the channel, especially if you're a new player or a free-to-play individual, because we want to make sure you guys are getting the most out of your Magic the Gathering Arena experience. With this all being said, let's try to break down some of these individual cards. When we look at the deck, we do find that it's lacking a little bit of strength until late game. And even then, if your opponent has removal on your key cards, it's gonna be a rough go. This is why we like to splash a third color, uh, primarily black, but we're gonna get to that later on in the series. Uh, so be sure to hit that bell icon once you're subscribed to be notified when our Celti Limited Guide comes out. First off though, we're gonna break down the commons, the uncommons, and then move our way into the rares and mythics of the deck. So Aegis Turtle, or Aegis Turtle, I don't know how you wanna say this. It's a zero five, so this just strictly fills 
the board presence roll, right? It's a nice defender. It's really cheap. You can get it out immediately. And it's going to shut down all of the aggro decks. Uh, it should be a pretty easy to pick, uh, pick to get within your packs, which is why it's such a low priority. You don't need to grab it first because no one else is probably going to take it other than you. Dreamtail Heroin for 5. This is a 3-4 with flying. Mutate for 4. Whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. So it's a flyer. It has evasion, right? That's part of our bread acronym. And then it is also a draw engine, which is like really, really good. Moving on to our green commons. We have Essence Symbiote, or Symbiote, sorry. <laughs> for 2. It costs 2 and it's a 2-2. Two -two. So base stats are just like vanilla, right? Whenever a creature you control mutates, put a 1-1 one -one counter on that creature and you gain two life. So this is a non-mutate creature that benefits from mutate, uh, very powerful card. So it's not very high priority, but if left on the field, um, it's just gonna ramp out of control. We have Flycatcher uh, Giraffid. This is a weird looking creature. I'll leave it at that. It's a three five. So it fills the role of board presence here for us. Flycatcher Giraffid enters the battlefield with your choice of a vigilance or a reach counter on it. So ideally, we're probably putting reach here to stop the flyers. We have Honey Mammoth as well. When Honey Mammoth enters the battlefield, you gain four life. It's a six, six, but the downside here is that it does cost six mana. We have only a single blue uncommon. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. And whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. It's a one, three, Polywog Symbiote, uh, Baby Godzilla Rune Reborn. <laughs> One of the coolest arts uh, in the game, other than Mech Godzilla, right? That card is banging. Um, so, this is not only, uh, like, I guess a reverse ramp where you're not getting more mana, but your things are cheaper. And then it's also a draw engine because you're going to get to draw and discard. So, it's a draw and cycle situation almost. Uh, moving on to our only green uncommon. Glowstone Recluse. This is a 3-drop, 2-3 spider with reach. It can mutate for 4. Whenever this creature mutates, put 2 1-1 one -one counters on it. So this is an amazing uh, target to mutate onto, right? It can get really out of hand quite easily. Uh, it does also have reach, so it fills that board presence uh, role of ours. Trumpeting Gnar for 3. It's a 3-3, three -three, so base stats are like vanilla, decent. Mutate for 5, a little expensive, however... Whenever this creature mutates, create a 3-3 green beast creature token. That's really good. Uh, I don't know what this thing is. It looks like a, a tiger slash antelope. I don't know. It's freaky. But the fact that you have token generation um, that you're able to mana sink into is really, really cool. Primal Empathy. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a 1-1 one -one counter on a creature you control. Parcel Beast for 4. This is a 2-4. Mutate cost is only two. You can also pay one and tap it. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it into the battlefield. If you don't put it uh, into the battlefield, put it into your hand instead. So this is a ramp, like a growth spiral on a stick kind of, right? That you can reuse. Pretty cool. We also have Pouncing Shore Shark for five. This is a four three with flash and mutate for four. Whenever this creature mutates, you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand which I guess actually belongs over here with our baby Godzilla. As far as our bombs of the set go, we have Sea Dasher Octopus for 3. It has Flash. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Mutate cost is 2. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So this is a really nice card to mutate on to maybe our Dreamtail Heroine, for example, if we have happened to get it. We also have Gem Razor, Reach Trample, 4-4 four, four for 4. Mutate costs for 3. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment, an opponent controls so nice removal on um, his removal right or his uh his exile effects or whatever it, uh, it happens to be vivian monsters advocate for five comes into the battlefield with only three loyalty she has two static abilities you may look at the top card of your library anytime and you may cast creature spells from the top of your library plus two create or sorry plus one create a three three beast creature token put your choice of vigilance reach or trample on it and minus two, when you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost and put it into the battlefield. So the nice thing is you could do the minus two immediately if you needed, if you had a big baddie. However, I think just making the three threes consistently is going to be really, really good in this deck, right? 
So we have two token generations. I mean, again, the chances that you get a Vivian Monstrous Advocate is low, but if you do, this might be one of the decks that you build around. So with that being said, I think we've covered all of the cards. Let's quickly jump back to our reference guide or our Simic Mutate Limited Cheat Sheet and recap, right? Ramp into big creatures, mutate creatures, stall the board, use life gain and reach, not as strong as the rest of the meta, splash a third color to enable rares, right? So if you get maybe a, a, a Dirge Bat or something, that's a mutate card that's black and could be splashed in, for example. I'm live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST at twitch.tv slash game, And you can find me also on YouTube doing daily uploads at youtube.com slash game. Remember, bombs, removal, evasion, aggro, dirt. That's your pick priority. Bombs are listed here. Removal, um, we do have an additional resource so you can familiarize yourself with all of the different removal, removal within Ikoria Beyond, uh, Ikoria Beyond Death. Ikoria Layer of Behemoths. So familiarize yourself with all of the removal. And it's pretty easy. Just look at all the cards while you're doing your picks, right? Then we move on to our high priority picks. These are the cards that really tie the deck together. And then low priority picks don't tie the deck together, but they really help support it, right? And then our low priority decks uh, or our low priority picks just help things uh, smooth out and help us get those wins more consistently. So that's all, you guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Reminder to check out the other parts of this series. Link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to join our Discord. And most importantly, we will see you all here tomorrow. If you liked today's video, be sure to check out some of our other content. We built playlists for our guides for beginners. And then we also have our greatest hits, which is a collection of our most popular videos. You can also subscribe if you're interested in winning up to 500,000 gems. So do that, tap that like button, send this out to a friend who you think might be interested in it as well, and have a great day.